And uh, where was the church hierarchy mistaken in their thinking when it comes to the Trinity doctrine? Well, I thought here the best thing to do would be perhaps to list the creeds yeah. and to just make statements about each statement they made to mm. show you where they were at okay. in their thinking. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so if we look at the first council, I've got some things written down in a table that anybody who listens to this FAQ can have a look at in the FAQ. Um, the, if we look at the table that I've made, I've got a table where on one side I've got the First Council of Nicaea, which is 325, mm -hmm. and on the other side of the table I've got the First Council of Constantinople, which happened in 381. And what I'm doing is I'm comparing the two statements of the Trinity mm -hmm. in those particular mm -hmm. statements. Now, they are quite different in parts mm. of these statements. So we need to analyse what part of it is true and what part of it isn't. So let's look at the statements one by one. What I've done is I've broken these statements into lines so we can allocate a number to them and then we can work out which part's true and which part isn't. Mm. Right? Okay. So the First Council of Nicaea in 325 said, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible. The First Council of Constantinople in 381 said, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, mighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. Both statements are completely true. Mm -hmm. God is one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible. I have no problem with that first statement mm -hmm. at, at all. Statement number two for the Nicene Council was, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten of the Father, the only begotten, that is the essence of the Father, God of God, light of light, very God of God, of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father. Completely false. Mm -hmm. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, this is the Constantinople mm -hmm. Council, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not anybody's Lord, by the way, <laughs> the only begotten Son of God, which I am not, begotten of the Father before all worlds, which I am not, light of light, which I am not, very God of very God, which I am not, begotten, not made, which I am made, not begotten, being of one substance with the Father. I am not of one substance with the Father except the substance of divine love. Mm -hmm. So most of that is also incorrect. So their concept of myself was the problem. Mm. You see, their concept of God was correct, but their concept of me as God's son mm. is where the distortion occurred. Mm. That was the thing that was incorrect. And that was the thing that they couldn't understand because of what I said. Mm. And because they couldn't understand the statements I made, they then came up with these concepts that were incorrect. Does that make sense? Yeah. So statement number two of both councils, incorrect, mm -hmm. completely incorrect. Statement number three, by whom, in other words, Jesus, by mm. whom all things were made both in heaven mm. and on earth and of um, the Council of Constantinople said, by whom all things were made. Completely incorrect. Right? I did not make all things. However, here they were taking some statements that I made from the first century, again, out of context, because I had re-established through my connection with God the ability for all humanity to re-establish a connection with God. Mm. In this way, I became what I sometimes refer to myself as the resurrection and the life. And I wasn't talking about the resurrection of a physical body. I was talking about the resurrection of the soul's potentiality to receive divine love, which Adam and Eve, the first human couple, Ammon and a man, lost. Okay. So when Ammon and a man lost the right, if you like, oh. to receive the gift of divine love, they died, oh. not physically, but yes. in the soul potentiality yeah. of receiving divine love. Ah. Does that make sense? It does. And in that moment, I, it, by my coming, resurrected this opportunity mm. because I, I found the mm -hmm. way that God has yes. allowed now to re-establish this connection with God. So I resurrected the opportunity. Yes. In this regard, all souls on this planet and in the spirit world were basically had now the ability to be recreated mm. in the sense that they could now be born again. They could mm. be a different creature mm. through this recreation. 
So I definitely came to Earth for that purpose. Now, could you tell me when did this happen? Because I, I'm, I'm fully hearing what you're saying here. Uh, it happened as soon as I became at one with God. Right. And this happened just before I was baptised by right. John. Right, right. So this ability yeah. became... I, I realised from the very early time in my life in the first century that God is now re-offering this love. Yes. And in fact, the, the way I felt it was that God had always offered this love there was just no one on earth who wanted to accept it. Right. And all of a sudden, I had this desire to accept it. Mm. So this was an enabling of my own passion and desire. Mm. And I recognised I wanted to accept it. And then I realised that this was the role of Messiah. The role of Messiah was not to be a king or ruler or no, no. leader you know, no. over the world. Uh. It was to lead people back to God, to yeah. lead people back to this condition of one with mm. God that God had first offered a modern man, Adam and Eve, mm. but... They had rejected it. And as a result of their rejecting of it, their soul died to the potentiality of receiving it. Mm. And as a result of that, all of humanity since yes. had died yes. in the sense of the potential of receiving love. Mm. And once I became, uh, you know, once I became, had this knowledge, I then realised that I could regain this as a soul potentiality because God was offering mm. it. I could regain it through this process with God and once I regained it, could show other people mm. through my example how to regain it. Mm. And in that way, the entire world of mankind was reborn through me. Mm. Mm. Not, not because of anything special I did, aside from becoming one with becoming God. at one with God and demonstrating how they too could become at one yeah. with God. So again, words of mine misapplied mm. and then turned into a doctrine, mm. which is in point number three of both councils. So that is false too. By whom all things were made both in heaven and on earth is false in the way the average Christian on the planet currently understands it. Yeah. Then four, it says, who for us men and for our salvation came down and was incarnate and was made man. That's completely true, mm. actually. I, the way I see the creation of my own soul, and it's the way I see the creation of everyone's soul, actually, is that God's created each soul of each individual for a unique purpose that is necessary for every other person on this, in, in this universe to understand God. Mm. You have an aspect or quality of God that not a single other person on this universe has inside of your soul. Mm. Wow. And if I get to know you and get to know that pure aspect of you, I'll get to see another quality of God. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I realised that the quality that God placed inside of me was this quality of wanting to assist in the redemption of man. Mm. That was the, that was the, it was the desire for God, no matter what everyone else around me wanted. Mm. That was the thing that implanted inside of me that was unique. Mm. And so, and so when, I came, when I came to earth, not that I had a pre-human existence as it implies, but I came to, uh, uh, like, I, I did have a pre existence, but not in a conscious manner. But, but this implies it was conscious, but it wasn't. But I did come to earth. God did send me to earth or send this soul, this soul, Mary and myself, to earth for the purpose of helping man work out their salvation. That was yep. the purpose of coming. And so I recognised that purpose inside of myself. I realised that that was the purpose of the Messiah. Not in the way that Christians now see it, of course. Now, the Constantinople Council says, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Now, this is completely mm. inaccurate. There was no Virgin Mary, my mother, mm. because she had sex with my father mm. before I was born. She told me such a thing <laughs> and has told me such a thing. And there was no, you know incarnation by the Holy Ghost. No, mm. the Holy Ghost did not plant a seed. And in fact, the Holy Ghost is implied here is a person. Mm. And of course, it's not a person either. So, so again, false. So let's look at five. Mm. It says, he suffered and the third day he rose again and ascended to heaven. Well, I did suffer. That is true. I did have some suffering. Um, not as much as many other people on the planet have, uh, though. And... I didn't raise on the third day. The reality is I appeared to people on the third day mm. after being raised the instant I died. Ah. So the reality is I, once I died, my physical body was ended, my spirit body was still alive. I passed straight away into the spirit state. 
And then I did some things in the spirit mm. world. One mm. of the things I did was I went to my home that I'd created in the 10th dimension, which is a third celestial sphere, which was the highest place I could go to at that time. And I went to my home and I checked it out because it was the first time I had the opportunity to do such a thing. I also went to the hells of the spirit world and, and shared uh, with, with them the divine truth. And in fact, the, the book of Peter mentions that, I had done, that I've done this, that I went to the hells to share mm. with people in ungodly places mm. the divine truth. Mm. And the reason why Peter said that was because I told him I'd done that after, when I appeared to him after, I, <laughs> after the third day uh, yeah. of being resurrected, if, as, as it is called. So, so I did suffer, but I was not resurrected on the third day. And I ascended to heaven as soon as I died mm. and I repeat, reappeared on the third day mm. to people on earth. That, so there are parts of the true of that statement and parts of the false. If we look at the Constantinople Council's statement, it said he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. Now, this is completely incorrect. I was not crucified for anyone. Mm. My death did not accomplish anything. Mm. You could become at one with God before I died. Mm. You could have become at one with God if you were there in the first century before I died. My death wouldn't help you become at one with God. Mm. So it's completely false that it was for us. Mm. My crucifixion wasn't for anybody aside from a group of angry, angry members of the Sanhedrin who mm. wanted me gone. Mm. That was my primary mm. reason why I was killed. Yes. And he suffered, which was true, and I was buried, and that is true. And the third day he rose again. That is not true. The third day I reappeared to people on earth. According to the scriptures, it says, and mm. ascended into heaven. I ascended into heaven as soon as I died and sits on the right hand of the Father. Well, well, if the right hand of the Father is a position of uh, favour, then I, I sit on the right hand of the Father even right now. Mm. <laughs> but if the right hand of the Father means in terms of ruling mm. over anybody, then no, that's mm. not that's not what is meant by sitting yeah. on the right hand of the Father. Let's look at the next statement. It says, from thence, six, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Completely incorrect. I'm never going to judge anybody. God's laws judge every single person. Mm -hmm. And there's no need for me to set myself up as a judge while God's laws do it. So um, I would never be a judge. Mm -hmm. The 381 Council says, from thence he shall come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. Now, I do believe the kingdom that I've established in the celestial kingdom will have no end. Mm -hmm. um, I'm suspicious, though, to a degree about that because I believe what will happen is that everyone in that kingdom will continue to progress. And so that means that there'll be new kingdoms yeah. established. Yeah. And uh, so my feelings are at this point in time, that the celestial kingdom may in the future come to have an end because even greater kingdoms may be established mm. through people receiving more and more mm. divine love. Mm. So, so I'm, I, wow. I don't feel that that's a, something that we can guarantee for certain. And then, of course, the first council of Nicaea says, and in the Holy Ghost, but that's all it says about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it doesn't say much else. Now, um, I do, there is a Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, however, the implication of the council was that the Holy Spirit was a part of God. Now, the Holy Spirit is an energy of God, mm. but it is not an entity of God, mm. which is very, very different. Mm. It's like you saying that, uh, for example, your arm is a part of you. Now, you wouldn't call your arm you. Mm. So you would never call the Holy Spirit God because it is only a part of God. It is, a part, it is an energy of God, in fact. So your arm is an energy thing connected to your, mm. your will, if you like. It, it is not you. Mm. I could not say your arm is you. I couldn't look at your hand and go, that's you. Yeah. You are your complete being. Was, God is the complete being. Talking to this um, Jewish um, leader once, mm -hmm. he wasn't a leader, he was just a teacher, and he referred to the Holy Spirit as God's loving kindness. Um, yeah, see, that is not the Holy Spirit. Mm. The reason why I was the first person to coin the term Holy Spirit, mm. and so I'm probably best to yeah. answer <laughs> to what, I meant, <laughs> what I meant by the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, uh, the reason why I coined the term was this. 
I recognized that God had many varieties of energies and forces. Mm. And, and in fact, the more I developed I became, the more I recognized the different types of energies and forces that God has. Now, some of these energies were creative in their nature. Mm. In other words, they, they enforced and created new things. Mm-hmm. They caused new things to come into being. Some of them were maintaining in nature. In other words, they maintained the order of the universe. Yeah. Some of them were structures of the universe. So in other words, the universe exists, couldn't ex- as it exists, couldn't exist without there being an underlying law-based structure that guides how the universe exists. And I understood that one of God's energies maintained the laws of the universe. But once I started connecting to divine love, I realised that God had one special energy that was far and above more powerful and also more important to humanity than any other energy. It was an energy that made the human holy. Uh It was the energy that made the human perfect. And the way that it made the human perfect was if you could connect to this energy, divine love could flow flow through the connection Mm. and transform the human soul. So so what I realised was that the Holy Spirit what I coined the term as Holy Spirit and what, what I, why I likened it was it was a, for, was a force of God that I could connect to as long as I maintained a personal state of truth. Mm. I could connect to this conduit like a pipe, like a water pipe. And the love from God could flow into me as a result of my connection to this pipe. The Holy Spirit is the pipe. Mm. It is the energy by which God transmits love into the human soul. It is a unique energy in that only the human soul can connect to this energy. Okay. And, and it caused the human soul to grow to the point of becoming holy, in other words, perfect. Mm. And so that's why I use the term holy spirit. Mm. Mm. Now, unfortunately, people then gave the Holy Spirit an entity uh, uh, yeah. and a role in itself Yes, beyond that which I gave it. And in fact, there is a general Christian belief that every time the word spirit is used in the New Testament, that it's referring to the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And this is actually an incorrect assumption as well because there are many spirits and I can, you know, we can discuss that in another question. And so, so the reality is the Holy Spirit has u- this unique thing, this unique quality of being able to bring God's love into the human soul and transform it. That's its uniqueness. Mm. And it's the only energy of God that that allows love to flow through it. It's the only one that I have discovered at this point that allows love to flow through it. There's love in all of the other energies as a persistent entity, as a persistent quality or substance. But, but this is the only one that allowed love to flow through yes. a connection to the human. In other words, that allowed the human soul to change. Mm. This is what I refer to as the new birth. Once mm. it's changed enough, it was like the human was a new creature. The human mm. was now divine in nature. And I recognised through this experience that my actual soul was transforming, physically transforming through this connection. And that was the role of the Holy Spirit. So the misunderstanding then grew from all of this. Yeah. And then they wanted to make the Holy Spirit God. And in fact, the Constantinople Council stated even a lot more false teachings about the Holy Spirit. They said, and in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life. So now they're assuming that the Holy Spirit is the creative spirit. Mm. So they're now mixing up mm. the different energies of God. Mm-hmm. It is the Lord and give, it is the giver of life in the sense, the giver of life to the human soul, transforming it into the divine. Without the Holy Spirit, the human soul can never become divine. So it is the giver of life in that way. And that's why I refer to it as the giver of life. Yeah. You see? Yeah. Who, proceed, who proceedeth from the Father? Well, the, the Holy Spirit isn't a who, it's a what. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's, it's not an or entity, <laughs> it's an energy. <laughs> who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped. Now, I cannot agree with that. Mm. It's like, it's like worshipping, it's like saying, every time I talk to you, instead of talking to you, I talk to your arm. 
<laughs> Why would you choose to do that when you can talk to the whole of you? <laughs> do you understand? Yes. And this is what it's like uh, when people refer to the Holy Spirit as God because it's like you can't talk to the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit does not talk. Mm. It does not converse. It is an energy through which something from God flows. And these are misunderstandings that were created. It can transform you, the connection with the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit itself that transforms you. That's right. It's the love that flows through it yes. that transforms you. It, uh, it also can only be maintained through a condition of truth. Mm. Uh, but that is a condition and not a who. It's, a, again, an energy and not mm. a person. So, so all of these statements about the Holy Spirit being a person. And he, it even indicates in this uh, council that the Holy Spirit is responsible for the resurrection of the dead. This is completely false mm. because the resurrection of the dead is automatic. Mm. God created a spirit body and a physical body. And Paul said, in fact, just as there is a physical body, so there is a spirit one. Yeah. And, and yeah. in fact, the spirit one is present with us even on earth. And as soon as yes. we die, the physical body disconnects. And we're now in our spirit body. Mm -hmm. It's a natural progression mm -hmm. of all humanity. Mm -hmm. It's not the result of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's a result of other laws of mm -hmm. God that have been created, other attributes and characteristics of the laws of the nature of the universe that mm -hmm. God created that cause this to occur. Right. So um, if you look at those statements, you can see quite categorically that uh, there are some statements that are very true, other statements that are a mixture of truth mm -hmm. and error, and other statements that are completely false. The First Council of Nicaea also said, in order to refute others, it said, but those who say there was a time when he was not, and he was not before he was made, and he was made out of nothing, or he is of another substance or essence, or the Son of God is created, or the Son of God is changeable, or alterable, they are condemned <laughs> by the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. The reality is every single one of those statements is false. Mm. So, firstly, it's impossible for a person to be condemned for their belief. Mm. They are condemned for their lack of love. Mm. Secondly, mm. there was a time when I was not, because there was a time when God existed and no one else existed, mm. and I'm the no, I, and that included me. Mm. There was a time. There was a time before I was made. Yeah. I was made out of energies from God, not out of nothing. Right. I also not, am not of another substance than anybody else, right? Yes. I, I am not of God's substance. I am of the same substance that every other person that has been created. I am completely changeable because God's love would never have transformed me if I wasn't changeable. Mm. And I am completely alterable and I hope to alter my life <laughs> every single moment from now on. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So I hope to continue to grow towards God, mm. which means, of course, that I will always change and always grow and mm. always be alterable. So these are all false doctrines that are all made, again, from assumptions, from mm. different statements, verbal statements that were later included in the Bible. Um, they were all misrepresentations of my actual words. Yep. Yeah. So that's a summary of how it all came into existence. <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it, that the very pinnacle of the Christian faith, the actual concept of God, itself is flawed. Yeah. And this is a very sad yeah. thing. Because if our concept of God is flawed, then there's a high likelihood we're not connecting to God when we think we are. Mm. Right? And, uh, and this is the danger of a, con of a flawed concept with God. You see, as we grow towards God, we will gain more and more of God's concept of God and not our own concept of God. Mm. And the trouble mm. with the Trinity doctrine is that it is a man-made concept of God. Mm. And so therefore it will, if continued to be believed, prevent relationship with God rather than sustaining it. Mm. Mm. So that's the sad thing about the Trinity yeah, Doctrine. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I feel for Christians who believe it and who believe it with their whole heart, like I understand the emotions that are impacted upon that. There is also, unfortunately, though, a bit of a love of the mystery. Mm. You see, there is this concept in much religious faith on the planet that mystery is essential to faith. Mm. And I do not agree with that okay. at all. I have never agreed with that, in okay. fact. I believe faith comes from reality. Right. It's like you asked me earlier, 
and people can refer to a different FAQ on this matter, you asked me earlier how the early Christians had faith. And I said because they had experienced the reality of my continued existence. Mm. That's how they had faith. Mm. Their faith wasn't some imagined state mm. that they thought they could obtain, but rather they had it proven to them mm. through this ex personal experience that they would continue to live. Yeah. You see, that is the basis of faith. If, if something is mysterious, then it's highly unlikely it comes from God. Okay. It usually comes from the um, desires of men to maintain mystery. What I find and what I know about God is that God wants me to know everything. But God also knows that God created a universe where I cannot know everything mm. because the universe is infinite and I am finite. Mm. Now, this is a very thing God has done. And in fact, in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible, it says this. God has placed inside of men's hearts time indefinite. It's placed the feeling of forever inside of our hearts. The reason why he's placed it is because he knows that we can search for the rest of our existence, everything God has done, and still not discover everything God has done. So there's the mystery. The mystery is not the fact that God wants everything to be mysterious, but rather that God wants us to discover everything God has done. But God has made so many things and to then discover some. <laughs> <laughs> that we'll be spending the rest of our existence yeah. discovering them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And, and that is a truth that is contained in the Bible. And, and, and I feel strongly that this is what we need to understand about the word of God being written on our heart. Mm. We need to understand that this is going to be an ever-changing and growing position if we're really connecting with God. Mm. We're not going to be having one fixed and firm viewpoint about anything in our future existence. We are going to know only the things we have discovered for certain. Yes. Now, the first century Christians knew for certain that their life continued after their death because I had demonstrated it personally to them. Mm. That's how they knew for certain. So they had an incredible faith as a result of that. Mm. They knew they could trust that because they'd seen it happen for me. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was God, there would be no such proof if you think about it. Mm. Because really... Well, that's right. Because it's not... Because I'm not a man. Yeah. And if I'm not a man who has died and then resurrected, then there is no such proof of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand? I do. So even the Apostle Paul, when he spoke about me dying and being resurrected as proof of the resurrection, if, if I was God, there would be no such proof because... Surely, for God, it would be different mm. than for man. Sure. So, so sure. Not, there is a lot of illogical doctrine that if you analyse it with a completely open mind, you can see that, you, that a lot of Christian doctrine doesn't make much sense mm. and, and there must be another explanation of these Bible verses. Mm. Mm. And that is the case wow. in most cases. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Oh, brilliant. No worries. <laughs> so that... I think that completes does it, our discussion about <laughs> we'll Trinity. The, we'll close the door on the Trinity for a minute. <laughs> we, we obviously will talk more about, uh, you know, we'll talk perhaps about some of the Bible verses and how they came to be as a result, you know, that seemed to imply the Trinity and so forth. That can be a completely different discussion yeah. um, because, uh, you know, it can be a long-winded discussion based on a lot of different Bible verses mm -hmm. that many people who hear this discussion may not want to <laughs> listen to in mm -hmm. a different discussion. So we'll, we'll answer those questions in a different discussion perhaps. Yes. About what the yes. Bible actually says about mm -hmm. the Trinity. Yeah. Okay. Okay.